Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update from me, Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer trying to do features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, thank you for joining me on one of my uh, weekly update videos where I hope to show, show you all of the work that I've been able to do this week and maybe even delve into some of the issues in Inkscape that are being solved by other people. Um, this week was actually a bit of a derailment, um, as we joke, uh, derailed better than a MBTA orange line train. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I'm going to give a big shout, shout out and a big th thank you to all of my sponsors on Patreon and my big sp sponsor th this week, which is Doluma LLC. Um, thank you all so much for the time that you're letting me spend on Inkscape. Um, it really is you guys who are doing uh, the, the material work that allows me to really fix and improve Inkscape in the way that you want to. Okay, so what is all this about? So the way the week started was I was doing the Pages Part 2 pro project, carrying on from last week, and uh, I was doing the, the margin. So let's get into what I actually did. Um, the the page mark margins work needed a bunch of little fi fixes, some some refinements. Thank you to everybody who downloaded the uh, builds and test tested them. Um, pointed out a few UX flaws. I also wanted to add a specific ability to um, uh, edit each of the margin fields by themselves, uh, as well as improve some of the snapping and some of the other elements, just like refining it a little bit. Um, but then, so it started with a fix to a, the export dialog. Basically, the the uh, if you cancelled an export, it would then uh, disable the the ability for you to export again. The the button would be disabled. Um, but it turns out that there was some very significant critical problems in the export dialogs preview fun functionality. This is uh, where you're working on some things and the export dialog in real time shows you what would be ex exported in a little box. The problem is, is that there's a little chat box that says uh, export only the selected items, right? And in order to preview which of those items are going to be in, in the, uh, you know, are selected, it, uh, it has to remove from the visual pre preview, not from the document, but from, from the preview, all of the items that are not selected. Right, all logical so far. The only problem is, is that this removal was happening in the middle of the update cycle for the for, for the object. So this made Inkscape incredibly grum grumpy. And if you want to make your Inkscape crash, all you have to do is uh, select that chat chat box that says selected items only, and then try and ungroup uh, any group, uh, and you will get an instant crash. So it took me two days of carefully combing through Inkscape's code base, a uh, lot of debugging, a lot of stuff to try and work out exactly what was going on. It was a very subtle problem. Um, big thanks to PBS and Raphael that helped with the code review and uh, pointing out some good suggestions of how to attack the problem. Uh, I put together a fix that essentially bundles the removal pro process into the update, uh, the actual generation of the, the, the update itself. This works really great, fixes the problem, and I think it should make the export dialog way more state stable. I would not be unsurprised if it actually fixed multiple crash problems. Um, so obviously, like, this was a bulk of my week, unfortunately, is fixing this, but it should make it into Inkscape 1.2.1, 1, 1 which will be great because it stabilizes that, that, that release further. Um, so the end of the week I actually spent on a commission. Now, um, Serial barterer Chris Rod Rogers, who is the person that does the artwork for this uh, video series, he wanted me to fix a very specific problem in the filter editor. So, if you make a fil filter in Inkscape, um, you can you have these little nodes that allow you to resize it, uh, reposition it, and rotate it. Unfortunately, uh, those nodes always appear. <laughs> at the origin at zero on the ca canvas. So imagine you're editing an ob object with a with a pattern and uh, you basically have to zoom out and then like hunt around the ca canvas for those nodes. Uh, so the commission was simple. 
make the editing work. Uh, the obvious thing is just to like position those nodes on the edited object. Um, but I felt actually I could do a little bit more than that. And I decided to make it so that if you click on an object with a pattern, it'll allow you to se select any of the tiles in the pattern and use those hand handles on that tile, right? Affecting the whole pattern. Uh, the reason why this is a better idea, I think, is because it allows you to basically think, use things like snapping against any of the tiles, right? And you can, you know, snap one side against one side and snap another side against another side or a rotation against a grid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so you can, all, and all you have to do is just select which of those tiles you're editing at that particular point. Um, there's a bunch of changes in the code to allow this to happen. Um, but it's a, it's a nice fe fe feature. I got some great responses from uh, Twitterverse when I posted about it. Thank, thank you all for your kind comments. And thank you for Chris for bartering with me to add some fun functionality to In Inkscape. It was, a, it was a real challenge. Um, oh, and there was also one more fix that I got in. for. Um, it's if you create a new pattern... Uh, Inkscape would generate a label for, for the pattern, which was something like pattern one, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you have a label on the group of ob objects that you're making into a pattern, it'll reuse the label. Um, so this should allow you to at least have a have the possibility of naming your patterns. Okay, so that's my mostly derailed week. Uh, next week, I'm going to... Uh, hopefully continue to work on the pages to <laughs> page. keep on trying to work on improving the pages fun fun functionality. We really got to get to the exporting problems. Uh, this is specific to do with like PDF exporting with multiple pages and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Other news, other things that happened in Inkscape this week. This is work, uh, features, fixes, and other things that I didn't do, uh, but it's worth hi highlighting them. Uh, PBS has continued his great work on memory management and has been improving the memory management of SP curves. This is an internal representation of the mathematical curve stru structures themselves. Uh, this is mostly back-end work. Um, Raphael has fixed uh, alignment issues, um, specifically to do when the, when the axis is reversed. And he also fixed uh, clipping issues with multiple pages when exporting. Uh, Nathan Lee has actually been wor working very well in taking some of these fixes that we're doing for 1.2.1 and packaging them all together, testing them, and making sure that they end up in the branch in the in the 1.2.x branch, which means they'll get released. Uh, this attention, it's like he's he's not doing the work, the actual quote unquote programming work, but this is critical work uh, to help support all the programmers. Um, and it just goes to show, to show you, you really don't need to be a, you know, elite programmer um, to really contribute meaningfully, uh, and in this case, critically, I would say, to an open source project. Um, so big props to Nathan again for his great work. Um, that's about it for this week. Uh, I hope you guys are having a non-derailed week and uh, getting all of your tasks done. Uh, but thank you for jo joining me, and um, yeah, we'll see you, see you all next week.